Man, I didn't even get a name for this. Yeah, well, I can check if you're on YouTube, please. All right, it seems so. You can check it to confirm it, please. Microphone check, one, two, three. One, two, three. All right. All right. Shalom, everyone. Welcome once again to just since we have gone live on YouTube, but um, we are here today, and we today we want to speak about chastening want to speak about the importance of chastening for our salvation. The importance of chastening. All right. Shalom, Steve P. and Tetramam. Shalom. The importance of chastening for our salvation. Sounds strange. The importance of chastening for our salvation. What does chastening have to do with our salvation? salvation. First of all, we have to explain what chastening is. What chastening is, the meaning of chastening. Chasten comes from the Hebrew word yasar, which means to discipline. To admonish. To correct, to chastise, to teach, to punish, to reform, to reprove. So, chastening, oh boy, I didn't, did I? oh yes, I started it. So chasing has everything to do with correction. But it is often correction that is harsh, hard correction. Correction sometimes that is unbearable. Correction sometimes that we think that is, it is not coming from the Most High. Because the Most High once said, I think in the book of Je Jeremiah, I don't remember, he says, I will chastise you with the chastisement of an enemy. Sometimes the Most High chastises us, punishes us, corrects us, instructs us, teaches us as if it is coming from an enemy and not from the Most High. Yeah? So sometimes we get chastening and we don't, cannot even understand that it is coming from the Most High. And it is similar to when we are chastened by our parents. 
when our parents correct us sometimes, it, it, it seems as if our parents do, um, don't love us. Some parents, I remember as a little boy growing up, when then, then those days beating a child was nothing. And a parent could beat a child anyhow and nothing would come out of it. And if you see the things that some parents used to beat some of the children who are really, really wayward, they would get the hose that they used to water the garden, garden hose. Some would use tire, strip the tires and use it to wait. Some things that they use and sometimes the child would be battered. And those days, nobody would say anything. They would just say, he was a rude child and you must hear the parent. But when you see the parent doing that, it appears as if the parent does not love the child. It is the same thing with the Most High sometimes when he is correcting us. He corrects us so harsh sometimes, it appears that it is not he who is doing it. And it appears as if he doesn't love us. In Deuteronomy 8 verse 5, it tells us... Um, Read Deuteronomy 8, verse 5, please. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so Yahuwah, thy Alua, chasteneth thee. So the Most High chastens us just as how a man would chasten his son. Yeah? So we have to look at how the Bible says a man should treat his son to understand how the Most High chastens us. Because, let me tell you something. Chastening or correction from the Most High is one of the most rejected things that comes from us as believers. None of us wants to suffer. None of us want to go through chastening, through correction. So much so that we are so prideful Always trying to put, put up a front. As last week we looked, we said that there's a lawyer that is always trying to bargain for us to show that we are okay, we are on the right side. And religion itself is aware that nobody wants to be chastened, so much so that um, in religion itself, when they are trying to attract you, they say, just come and just serve um, JC, Jesus, he will provide for you. He will, um, he will do everything for you. Um, he will take care of you. You won't have to worry about anything anymore. So they present the Messiah and present Yahuwah as someone that is not going to chasten them. And when we come into the way now and the Most High starts to chasten us, many of us, we get rebellious, we get angry, we get bitter, we get, and the pride starts coming out because we were not taught from the beginning that chastening is a necessary, essential part on our way to salvation. Punishment, teaching, correction, reprove, rebuke, suffering, affliction, persecution, disrespect, hard times, tough times. All of these things are essential parts of our walk to salvation. But we don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. Now, as we said, Yahuwah treats us like sons. In the book of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24, it tells us that if we spare the rod, means if we don't whip the child, it means that we actually hate our child. So go and tell that today to governments all over the world who are now saying that if you whip your child, then you are evil. But the Bible is saying the opposite. If you don't whip them, stop completely. Um, oh, it's disconnected, reconnecting. It's the internet. Let's see if it will reconnect. All right. Proverbs 13, 24. All right, these are reconnected. All right, so it's the opposite in the Bible. Proverbs 13, 24, read it, please. He that spareth his rod 
hateth his son. That means if you don't whip the child, it means you hate the child. Continue. But he that loveth him, chasteneth him betimes. So, he, when you love your child, you will chasten him, you will whip him many times. So this, coming from Yahuwah, is how Yahuwah treats us. Because he loves us, he does not spare the rod on us. He whips us. If he doesn't love us, then we will be spared the whipping. So if we're going through life and we're not going through any hard times, hard things, no whipping at all, we know that something is wrong. Yeah. Now, also in Proverbs, even if the child is crying, we must not spare him. I want you to think about these things with the Most High. Even though we are crying and complaining, the Most High will not spare us the rod. Because he tells us this of parents. Proverbs 19, 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. You see? Whip the child. Whip the child while there is hope. Yes? That is before the child reaches to the point where he cannot be turned around. So the Most High will whip us to the point unless, until there is no hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. So no matter how much he's crying. I remember back in those days, you had some people that were great criers. Great criers. I remember when I was in classroom one of the time. This guy is now not here with us anymore. In grade 5, and teacher was whipping him. And when the teacher started whipping him, he says, teacher, me love you, me love you. <laughs> in other words, I love you, teacher, I love you. He wants to tell the teacher that he loves the teacher so that the teacher gets so, um, feels so good inside. He said, okay, I'm going to stop whipping you. But the teacher did not stop. And I'll never forget. Every time I, I see him, I, I saw him, I remember that. Yeah? So let not thy soul spare for his crying. Let me tell you something. We believers, we don't like chastening. But guess what? If we do not endure chastening and turn ourselves around as a result of the chastening, then the Most High is going to cut us off. Because that is in the Torah. Let's go to the Torah and see what happens to a child who does not respond to um, chastening. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18 to 21. What is it? Deuteronomy 21, 18 to 21. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that, when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Mm -hmm. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, and bring him out unto the elders of his city, and unto the gate of his place. Mm -hmm. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all, all the, the men, men of, of his city... city shall stone, stone him with stones, stones that, that he, he die. die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Yasharel shall hear and fear. All right, so this is the principle. If the Most High chastens us, because it's the same principle, remember it says, as a man chastens his son, so Yahuwah chastens you. So if Yahuwah is chastening us, and we are not obeying the Most High to make a change to repent and to change around, then the Most High will have a point where he cuts us off, that he die. So shall they put away evil from among you. So many of us as believers, many of us refuse to respond to the chastening of the Most High, especially because the chastening comes from the Most High in different ways. The Most High speaks to us through people. 
He will chasten us through people. And when we are going through chastening, and he will chasten us through situations as well that we are brought through, when we are chastened, we have to turn and repent. Repent. That is the key. Repent. All right. There is no salvation without chastening. You cannot say you are a believer now when you're walking in the way. And you're not getting chastened. And you're not responding to the chastening. Because why? When we come to serve the Most High, we are sinful men coming out of this world. Yes? Sinful men. Let me see if this thing is still on. Sinful men coming out of this world. And um, is it still on? message couldn't be sent is it still on it's not on oh it's disconnected again all right the internet here is terrible yeah so and see it's chipped out on the radio as well let me get this thing down check check one two yeah so it's Reconnected. Let me try it now. Reconnection. Live stream has ended. Okay. All right. I'll just. What should I do? I'm going to start streaming it again. Um, all right, sorry about that for those who are hearing. All right, let's see if it goes again, just one time. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I'm recording it, just in case. All right. The radio is playing over there. Whoa, everything. All right. Oh, bad internet. So I just I'll have to record them. All right. So where were we again? Yeah, no salvation without chastening. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. And um, verse 15, I think. Hebrews 12, verse 5 to 15. Hold on. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of Yahuwah, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Yes. For whom Yahuwah loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth. Whom Yahuwah loveth, he chasteneth. Let's go from verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of Yahuwah, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. When thou art rebuked. That word despise there. What does it mean? Despise not thou the chastening. 
All right. Man, the amount of messages. <laughs> Radio is still playing over the study, and you're not on YouTube, so they're not hearing any at all. The internet. Yeah. All right, Hebrews 12, verse 5. Despise. The word despise there is a Greek word, oligoreo, which means to have little regard for. That is to disesteem. So we have little regard for the correction, for the chastening of Alua. It says, do not do that. Do not be faint when you start to go through chastening. For the Most High will chasten who he loves. Whom he loveth, he chasteneth. And the word chasteneth there, the Greek G3811, pahidio, who he loves, he chastens, it means to train up a child. That is, educate, or by implication, discipline by punishment. Discipline by punishment. Instruct, learn, teach. So the Most High will train us up like a child. When we are going through those things, we must not despise it. Continue in verse 6. For whom Yahuwah loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Now that word scourgeth is a very serious word. So he disciplines every child that he gets, but he scourgeth every son whom he receives. Scourgeth means to flog, literally or figuratively, to whip. So the Most High whips every son whom he receives. That is why we say chastening is essential for our salvation. If you come to the Most High, and you don't receive a whipping. It means you are already perfect. Because the sinful nature that is in us, the most has to whip that out of us. To teach us to turn away and turn around into a new way. Even when you decide that you're going to turn around, that old sinful man is going to still be there. And it has to be chastened and whipped out of us. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, a lure dealeth with you. As with sons, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? That's what we're talking about, essential to, chance, um, to salvation. It says, if you endure chastening, then he treats you as his sons. If you endure. So if you don't endure his chastening, you're going through it, and you're getting miserable and flustered, and you don't want to go through it, then guess what? He will not treat you like sons. Just go and read the verses and we will see verse 8 but if ye be without chastisement whereof all are partakers then are ye bastards and not sons so if you don't go through chastisement and you are bastards which we where in the bible says that bastards can enter me that I know in the Torah, in the Torah, it tells me something about bastard. Deuteronomy 23, verse 2. So if you don't have chastisement, then you are a bastard. And hear what the Torah says about bastard. Deuteronomy 23, 2. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of Yahuwah, even to his tenth generation, Shall he not enter into the congregation of Yahuwah? That's what Shaul, the person is saying in Hebrews 12, 8. I'm not even sure it's Shaul. That's what the writer is saying in Hebrews 12, 8. You're a bastard. You cannot enter into the kingdom. Verse 9. Chastisement is essential for our salvation. Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. And we gave them reverence. 
Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? The only thing is, when the Most High is chastening us, we don't know that it is He that is chastening us. That is the sad thing about it. But we have to be spiritual so we can understand spiritual things and know that the Most High works through situations, but He also works through people. Verse 10. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. All right. And we know in Hebrews it says, Seek ye peace and holiness, without which no man shall see Alua. Chastisement is essential for our salvation. If you are without chastisement, then you cannot be partakers of his holiness. Without being partakers of his holiness, you cannot see him. Verse 11. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So when you're going to the, ch to the chastening, it does not seem to be joyous it doesn't seem to be happy nice comfortable but it yields fruit in the end everything is the opposite so in the end that is when you are going to reap the fruit because righteousness shall be our reward verse 12 wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. All right, this is what he's saying in these two verses. He's actually saying, go and volunteer yourself for chastening. Anything that you see what needs to be chastened, go and volunteer yourselves and do it. And we're going to look at it further down, how we volunteer ourselves for chastening. When we volunteer ourselves for chastening, we take away the most high's chastening from us. Yeah? We're going to look at this further on. I don't want to speak about it too early. Verse 14. Follow peace with all men mm -hmm. and holiness, without which no man shall see Yahuwah. This is what it's telling us. Allow yourselves to be chastened so you can be brought to the point of holiness so that you can see the Most High. 15. Looking diligently, lest, lest any man fail of the favor of Alua, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Oh boy. So we have to look diligently. And we know diligently means to beware, just in case any of us fail of the favor of Yahuwah. So if the Most High is whipping us and we are running away from it, then we will fail of his favor. So lest, just in case any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. So what does the root of bitterness have to do with chastening? If you are not taking chastening, you will not be humble. You will easily be bitter, be angry, be envious. All of those um, things that are in the, the Shepherd of Hermas. The Shepherd of Hermas told, you about, told us about those things. All of those negative things that travel together. Malice, all of those things. So when we are chastened, then those things can be brought under control. And therefore, we can avoid defilement. All right. Let me continue. And where am I? All right. So we're going to look in a book called The Psalms of Solomon. This sp speaks a lot about chastening that you don't find in most other books. The Psalm of Solomon. And we will begin at chapter 3, verses 4 to 15. 
and we are going to show the righteous do not despise chastening because they know the benefits and they hold Alua righteous while we are going through the chastening. The Psalm of Solomon chapter 3 verses 4 to 15. You can download the book The Psalm of Solomon from our website justaword.org slash downloads. And you can download it and follow along with us. So, Psalm of Solomon chapter 3 verses 4 to 15. Go ahead please. The righteous despiseth not the chastening of Yahuwah. His will is always before Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. The righteous stumbleth and holdeth Yahuwah righteous. Mm -hmm. He falleth and looketh out for what Elohim will do to him. So the righteous will not despise the chastening. When the righteous stumble, he holds Yahuwah righteous and saying, You are righteous, Father. I am in error. He falleth and looketh out for what Allah will do to him. So when he falls, he's looking for correction. He's looking for chastening. Expecting to be chastened. Why? Because he knows the value of chastening. That the chastening will correct him. And the chastening will make him have good standing before the Most High. You see, when the Most High corrects us or chastens us, and we respond favorably, we endure it. We accept it. Then the Most High looks upon us favorably. And he has a time when he will deliver us. So he doesn't chasten us forever. He has his time when he will take us out. If we hold him righteous. Verse 6. He seeketh out whence his deliverance will come. From whence his deliverance. So the righteous knows how this thing operates. I'm going to be chastened, but I'm going to wait and see from where my deliverance will come. Verse 7. The steadfastness of the righteous is from Alua, their deliverer. Mm -hmm. There lodgeth not in the house of the righteous sin upon sin. Mm -hmm. So the righteous will not add sin. Um, the righteous... Does not add sin to sin. Verse 8. The righteous continually searcheth his house to remove utterly all iniquity done, done by him in error. So the righteous now will be busy trying his best to take out every single iniquity, everything that he has done in error, so that he can be perfect before the Most High. He knows. That if he makes a mistake, he will be chastened. So he is busy cleaning out the house. Cleaning out the house to make sure that there is nothing left in there for him to be chastened about. Verse 9. He maketh atonement for sins of ignorance by fasting and afflicting his soul. And there we go. That is how you chasten yourself to make sure that the Most High does not chasten you. He make atonement for sins of ignorance by fasting and afflicting his soul. So when you fast and afflict your soul because of some error and you have learned your lesson, repented, turned around, the most I knows, disconnecting again, the most I knows, the most I knows that he doesn't have to afflict you for that particular thing. Because you have voluntarily, you have voluntarily owned up to it, accepted that you were wrong, and you have gone out to afflict yourself because of what you have done. When you have done that, the Most High does not have to afflict you. That is another importance of fasting and prayer, of a lifestyle of fasting. It will get the sins out. And it will keep away the chastening of the Most High. Now look at verse 10. And Yahuwah counteth guiltless every pious man and his house. Guiltless. So when we are searching our house, busily searching our house to find everything that is wrong. And when we find something wrong, 
we go and we fast for it and we afflict ourselves. When we are finished, we are going to be Kodesh. And we won't need any affliction. Verse 11. The sinner is the opposite. We just spoke about the righteous. Let's see what the sinner does. The sinner stumbleth and curseth his life. The day when he was begotten and his mother's travail. So the sinner stumble and curse his life. The righteous man stumble and he holds Yahuwah righteous. He goes and he repents and he tries to make his way clean. The sinner does what in verse 12? He addeth sins to sins while he liveth. Yes. Continue. He, he falleth very grievous is his fall and riseth no more. Now hear this. The destruction of the sinner is forever. forever. And he shall not be remembered when the righteous is visited. So you see why we have to strive after pure righteousness. The destruction of the sinner is forever, and he shall not be remembered when the righteous is visited. That is why we have to strive after pure righteousness. Okay? Psalm of Solomon, chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, page 16. Psalm of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 16, 1 to 8. Mm. Um, let me just say. All right. All right, read it, please. Make not thy dwelling afar from us, O Elohim, lest they assail us that hate us without cause. Mm -hmm. For thou hast rejected them, O Elohim. Let not their foot trample upon thy holy inheritance. All right, so what we're going to show in this is that his chastening is his mercy. We will look at it as we going through some hard, tough, bitter times, being disciplined, being whipped, being punished. But from the Most High, this is His mercy. And why is it His mercy? Because without it, we will end up in sin. Without this whipping, without this correction, just as when you have a child. If you have a child and the child is misbehaving, and you leave that child and do not correct the child, do not whip the child, do not punish the child, then that child will continue on the way to sin and will end up, may end up, might end up. Sometimes there are some things in some children, they just turn around by themselves. But most of the time, if you don't correct them, they might end up into rotten children. Go ahead. Uh. Proverbs 23, verse 18. Proverbs 23. Mm. 18, 14, 18 up to 14. Proverbs 23. You, you got it? Hold on. <coughs> Proverbs 23, verse what? 18. 18 up to 14. Okay. All right, go ahead. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, mm -hmm. he shall not die. Uh huh. Continue. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and, and shalt, shalt deliver, deliver his, his soul from, from hell. hell. There we go. That's a, that's a perfect um, matching sets of verses. Do not withhold correction for the child. If you beat him with the rod, he shall not die. And the most time when he's correcting us, he makes sure that we do not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from Sheol, from hell. Let's go back to Psalm of Solomon 7. Where were we? We were at verse 3. Chasten us thyself in thy good pleasure, but give us not up to the nations. All right. This shows you how much the nations hate us the children of Yasharal. It is better for the Most High to, to chasten us in his good pleasure than for him to give us up to the nations because the nations show us no mercy. Yes. 
as they did in the slave trade when they had our fathers in <laughs> slavery. Verse 4. For if thou sendest pestilence, thou thyself givest it charge concerning us. This is his mercy in his chastening. So if he sends pestilence, he gives a charge concerning us. So it might just afflict, afflict some of our people. Or it might just afflict other people and don't afflict us too much. And all of that. Something he does that is merciful to us. So for example, when he sent um, this thing, I forget that where it might be on YouTube. The thing that you put in your arm that they made us to in inject us in our arms. When they sent that and the, the leaders of the world wanted people to take it, they came to Africa. And Africa was among the fewest set of people who actually took it, especially West Africa, where they wanted people to take this thing. The Most High gives a charge concerning us. So we don't get it as bad as the other nations. Verse, for thou art merciful. For thou art merciful and wilt not be angry to the point of consuming us. That's his chastening. It's not to consume us. It is to correct us. Verse 5. While thy name dwelleth in our midst, we, we shall, shall find, find mercy. mercy. And the nations? And the nations shall not prevail against us. Because? For thou art our shield. Mm -hmm. And when we call upon thee, thou hearkenest to us. Just like a good parent. Verse 8. For thou wilt pity the seed of Yasharel forever, and thou wilt not reject them. Mm -hmm. But he shall be we, under. We. But we shall be under thy yoke forever, and, and under, under the, the rod, rod of, of thy, thy chastening. chastening. You see how Solomon welcomes the chastening we shall be under thy yoke forever and under the rod of thy chastening most of us as believers we hate chastening we despise chastening all right where do we go now same psalm of solomon chapter 13 verses 1 2 11. Psalm of Solomon, chapter 13, 1 to 11. We're gonna, we are showing that the chastening of the righteous is different from the chastening that sinners receive. Chastening of the righteous, we have to understand chastening. So we're going into everything. Chastening of the righteous, different from the chastening of the sinners. Which page did I say it was again? Um, oh, you don't have it. 26. Tw 25 or 26. 25. Yeah. Chapter 13, verses what? Starting at 1. Yeah, verse 1, verses 1 to 11. Go ahead. The right hand of Yahuwah hath covered me. The right hand of Yahuwah hath spread, spared us. Mm -hmm. The arm of Yahuwah hath saved us from the sword that passed through from famine and the death of sinners. Mm -hmm. Noisome beasts ran upon them. With their teeth they tore their flesh, and with their molars crushed their bones. But from all these things, Yahuwah delivered us. Ah. So these are things that sinners went through, but he spared the righteous from going through these things. Verse 4. The righteous was troubled on account of his errors, lest he should be taken away along with the sinners. All right. Yesterday I spoke with someone. If the person is listening, look at this verse. The righteous was troubled on account of his errors, lest he should be taken away along with the sinners. All right, so the person was calling me concerned that the many times that she had erred from the way. I mean, the amount of times she had made errors in the way. She was fearful that the Most High was done with her and would actually um, destroy her. But it's saying 
telling us the difference between how he treats sinners and how he treats the righteous. The Most High is merciful. Verse 5. For terrible is the overthrow of the sinner, but not one of all these things toucheth the righteous. For not alike are the chastening of the righteous, for sins done in ignorance and the overthrow of the sinners. As long as we don't do things on purpose, as long as we don't sin willfully, willfully, then our treatment is different from that of sinners. Verse 7. Secretly is the righteous chastened, lest the sinner rejoice over the righteous. You see that? Even in the manner in which he does it, he will chasten the righteous secretly so that the sinner cannot rejoice over the righteous. Verse 8. For he correcteth the righteous as a beloved son, and his chastisement is that of a firstborn. Yes. For Yahuwah spareth his pious ones, and blotteth out their errors by his chastening. For the life of the righteous shall be forever. You see that? He spares his holy ones, and blots out their errors by his chastening. Because the life of the righteous shall be forever. So he spares the righteous in order to preserve them. But what about the sinners? Verse 10. But sinners shall be taken away into destruction, and, and their, their memorial, memorial shall be found no more. But what about the righteous? Verse 11. But upon the pious is the mercy of Yahuwah, and upon them that fear him is mercy. All right. Yada Yahuwah. Psalm of Solomon, chapter 28, verse 30, um, page 35, 28, 3 to 10. 28. Um, 28. Oh, 3 to 10. What, what chapter did I say? 28. Solomon 28, 3 to 10. Page 35. Uh, this is 26. 28. Oh, this is 18. What's this? 18. It doesn't have 28 chapter. I don't know why I get 28 there. Is it 18? I think it's 18. Three to five. It says, thine, what does it say? Thine ears listen to the hopeful prayer of the poor. Yeah. Thy judgments are executed upon the whole earth in mercy. And thy love is toward the seed of Abraham the children of Yasharel. Mm -hmm. Thy chastisement is upon us as upon a firstborn, only begotten son. To turn, to turn back, back the, the obedient, obedient soul from, from folly that is wrought in ignorance. Again, we see his chastisement. When we do something in ignorance and we are obedient, yes, he will chastise us to make sure that we turn back from the false way that we were going. All right. No, what, what, what verse did I say? I think something is wrong here. 3 to 10. Okay, continue. May Elohim cleanse Yasharel against the day of mercy and Barakah, against the day of choice, when he bringeth back his anointed. This, this, this is the end time. I forgot to read the headline. The headline is the latter days chastening to help us to be ready for the return of Yahusha Hamashiach. This is for us. This is speaking to us in this time. To help us to be ready for the return of Hamashiach. Verse 6. Barak shall they be 
No, go back over verse 6. May Elohim. May Elohim cleanse Yasharel against the day of mercy and Barakah, against the day of choice when he bringeth back his anointed. So he'll be preparing us for Yahusha Hamashiach by chastening us. Verse 7. Barak shall they be that shall be in those days, in that they shall see the goodness of Yahuwah, which he shall perform for the generation that is to come. So what part does chastening play? Verse 8. Under the rod of chastening of Yahuwah's anointed, in the fear of his Elohim, in the Ruach of wisdom mm -hmm. and righteousness and strength, mm -hmm. that he may direct every man in the works of righteousness by the fear of Elohim, that he may establish them all before Yahuwah. A good generation living in the fear of Elohim in the days of mercy, Selah. So it is chastening that is going to bring us to perfection, to be ready for Yahusha HaMashiach. Now, there is a set of hymns in the Dead Sea Scrolls called the Thanksgiving Hymns. And we're going to read hymn number two. Verse 3. Because I have understood that it is you who does establish the path of whomsoever you choose. You do hedge him in with true discernment so that he may not sin against you and that his humility may bear fruit through your chastisement. You right. purify his heart in your trials. All right, so what it's saying... So the Most High chastens us so that we do not sin against him. He chastens us so that we can become humble. That his humility may bear fruit through your chastisement. You purify his heart in your trials. So it is the trials that we go through, the chastisement that we go through, that will purify our hearts. So chastisement, chastening, is absolutely necessary to get us into perfection. Again, I speak, but this is something that we, as believers, actually, truly, truly hate. But, because chastening has to do with our salvation, being chastened by him is a blessing. It is a blessing to be chastened by the Most High. Why? It says, who he loves, he chastens. So it's a blessing to be under his love. If we are not being chastened, then something is wrong. If we are not being chastened, something is wrong. Psalm 94, I think I said 12 to 15 in there. It's a barakah or a blessing to be chastened by the Most High. Go ahead, please. Barak is the man whom thou chastenest, O Yahuwah, and teachest him out of thy law. And teachest him out of thy law. So we are chastened and taught out of his law. You see the law done away with is a problem? Mm. Because what is he going to teach us out of but the Torah? You have something to say? Psalm 119, verse 67. Psalm 119. And verse 71. 67? Yes. And 71. And 71. Go ahead. Before I was afflicted, I, I went, went astray. astray. But now, now have, have I, I kept, kept my word. word. So, Thou, oh. so before, before we were chastened, we went astray. But now that we have been chastened, we now can keep our word. Chastening brings us in line, brings us back into the line of righteousness. And what did it say? 
verse 71. You said? Yes, yeah, 71. 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. So without affliction, without chastening, you would not have learned his statutes. Hmm. And why is this? While you're going through your affliction, you are going to be learning. And you're going to understand what his word said. And then say, oh, that's why Yahuwah said this. And that's why Yahuwah said that. Second Samuel. Second Samuel 7. 14 and 15. Ah, I saw this, yes. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. My mercy shall not depart from him. You know that this is the answer to a question that has popular, uh, popularly asked. Who is he speaking about here? Solomon. And people ask all the while, I wonder if Solomon made it in. Look what he said. My mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul. You see it? So that means he made it. Is, is David... No, man, it's not David's going to build the house. David somewhere. Solomon built the house. Verse 13 says, He shall build a house for my name. Yeah. Yeah, verse 12, he was speaking to David. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, Shulema, which shall proceed out of thy boils, and I will establish thy kingdom. So this appears to be telling us that Shulema made it in. Yeah. Huh? Because of his mercy. Yeah. Wow. Um, where were we again? We were at um ninety four. We were at Psalm ninety four. V- verse thirteen now. Start from twelve into thirteen. Barak is the man whom thou chastenest, O Yahuwah, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. Mm -hmm. For Yahuwah will not cast off his people, Mm -hmm. neither will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. All right, so the Most High chastens us so that we will not have a lot, the lot with the wicked. We have to start welcoming troubles. Hmm? Now the Most High's chastening might even bring us near to death. But if we endure... We will be restored better than before. Better than before. The Most High is so merciful and is so loving. He will chasten us hard, hard, hard. But uh, Job 33, 14 to 30. Job 33. Chapter 14 to 30. 14 to 30. Yes. For a Lua speaketh once, yea, twice, yet a man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed. So the Most High will speak to people who he is chastening. He will give them a dream and they will not understand it. Then he does what? 16. Then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Then he will come to them 
and tell them what is happening. Probably somebody listening to this is being chastened. You've been given dreams, probably even bad dreams, and you don't understand it. Yeah? Now the Most High is sealing up the instructions. We have to understand and know when we are being chastened. Verse 17, so that we don't get flustered and miserable and don't come out of the way. We have to stay in the way of chastening. Wait patiently on the Most High until he turns us around. Verse 17, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Mm -hmm. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Mm -hmm. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with, with strong, strong pain, pain, so that his life abhorreth bread and his soul dainty meat. Mm -hmm. This is how far the Most High will take us with his chastening. To take us out of what? To take us out of pride. Pride is the problem. Hide pride from man, verse 17. Continue. 17. No, where you were. 21. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Mm. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. Mm. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him. And saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Wow. So if there is a messenger to show unto man his uprightness, this will be Yahuwah's uprightness, then Yahuwah will be gracious unto him and deliver him from going down to the pit. Verse 25. This is when the Most High delivers us from these chastening, look at what happens. Verse 25. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. Mm -hmm. He shall pray unto Alua, and he will be favorable unto, unto him. him. And he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. That's how merciful the Most High is with his chastening. Near to death, and the Most High will send a messenger and then the Most High will take out that person. Continue. He looketh upon men and if any say I have sinned and perverted that which was right and it profited me not, he will he deliver, deliver his, his soul, soul from, from going pit. into the pit and his life shall see the light. So what we have here? Repentance. Repentance. Repentance is the key to chastening. If any say I have sinned and perverted that which was right and it profited me, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit and his life shall see the light. In repentance, so important. Verse 29. Lo, all these things worketh a lure oftentimes with man to bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. Oh. So the Most High just does not want us to go down into the pit. He will bring us through this to get rid of our pride as long as we repent. Hmm. Most High is great and merciful. All right, so we have Psalms 118, 17 to 20. Psalms 118, 17 to 20, the same principle. Psalm 118, 17 to 20. Read it, please. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of Yahuwah. Yahuwah hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise Yahuwah. 
the mm. gate of Yahuwah, into which the righteous shall enter. So the righteous being chastened, it says, He hath not given me over unto death. That is how merciful the Most High is. He chastens us to change us, to turn us around, not to destroy us, just like our parents. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Just like our parents, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Yes. As unknown and yet well known, as dying and beheld, behold, we live, as chastened and not killed. Ah, this is it. As chastened and not killed. The most I will take us to some places, rough, rough, rough places. Yes? Anyone that has gone through chastening or is going through chastening, he will chasten you, but he will not kill you. That's what his word says. Continue. Verse 1 Corinthians 11, 31 to 32. 1 Corinthians 11, 31 to 32. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of Yahuwah, that, that we, we should, should not, not be condemned, condemned with, with the, the world. world. So the world is moving into sin. And the Most High knows his righteous people. And he sees us and he says, you know, if John continues along this path, John is going to end up just like the people in the world. The Most High said, no man, he needs a whipping. And he takes John. <laughs> he takes John and whips John. And John wakes up. And goes into the paths of righteousness. John's soul is saved. Yes? It says, for if we should, would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So many of us are going through, and we are not judging ourselves. Why? Self-righteousness. We are going through. We are good. We are right. Last week, made me get this understanding about self-righteousness. Going through, thinking that we are okay, <clears throat> trying to hold ourselves right, not willing to judge ourselves so that we can see our faults, so that we can correct them before the Most High whips us. But when we are judged, when we don't judge ourselves and allow the Most High to judge us, He will chasten us. But it is for our good that we should not be condemned with the world. So even though the whipping might be bad, but it is for the good so that we are not condemned with the world. So again, he will deliver those whom he chastens. Job 5, 17 to 19. He will deliver those whom he chastens. Read it, please. Behold, happy is the man whom Allah correcteth. Aha. Uh -huh. Happy is the man who the Most High corrects. And you know, sometimes he corrects us in the assembly. This is another thing. The Most High will correct us, correct us in assemblies. When the Most High speaks through whomever he gives to speak, um, sometimes we take it personally. And instead of looking on the message, we attack the messenger. Yeah? Happy is the man whom Alua corrected. So we don't hold ourselves happy because of pride. It will be pride. Because of pride... I feel hurt because the Most High has brought out a word. And then I don't say it's the Most High. I say it's Pastor, Pastor John has, he is picking on me. Happy is the man whom Alua corrected. Therefore, what? Despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. That's it. Do not despise it. Be happy when he corrects you. Verse 18. For he maketh sore, and bindeth up. He woundeth, 
and his hands make whole. Ah. So, we are going to hear a hard word. But guess what? The hard word is going to hurt us, but he, the same one who hurts us is going to bind up the wounds. He wounded and his hands make hold. Whole. So he will wound us with the word, hard word, or the chastening, and he, the same one, will be the one who is going to bring us back. Verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea. Yea. In seven, there shall no evil touch thee. So if we go through the chastening, he will just deliver us through whatever thing that we go through. This we got to understand. Read verse 20. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death, and in war, from the power of the sword. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Yes. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. Mm -hmm. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. 23. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. 24. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shalt not sin. Aha. Uh -huh. This is the people who go through the chastening, who hold themselves happy that Yahuwah has chastened them. So, we are saved through chastening. There are many things that saved us. Saved through tr truth. Saved through belief. Saved through faith. Saved through this. Peter said, baptism now saves us. A lot of things saved us. Saved through chastening. Let's go back to the Psalms of Solomon, page 29, chapter 16, verses 1 to 15. Psalm of Solomon, page 29, chapter 16, pages 1, verses 1 to 15. Let's go. When my soul slumbered, being afar from Yahuwah, I had all but slipped down to the pit mm -hmm. when I was far from Elohim. My soul had been well nigh poured out unto death. I had been nigh unto the gates of Sheol mm -hmm. with the sinner. When my soul departed from Yahuwah, Elohim of Yasharel, had, had not, not Yahuwah, Yahuwah helped, helped me with his everlasting mercy, he pricked me as a horse is pricked that I might serve him, my Savior and helper, at all times saved me. So you see how he saved us. He pricked me. That means he chastened me to wake me up from my slumber. He pricked me as a horse is pricked. Verse 5. I will give thanks unto thee, O Elohim, for thou hast helped me to my salvation, mm -hmm. and hast not counted me with sinners to my destruction. So the Most High could have left us on the way to sin. But through his love and his mercy, he paid attention to me, and he pricked me. That's what you have to say when you're going through it. And he pricked me to help me to my salvation. Verse 6. Remove not thy mercy from me, O Elohim, nor thy memorial from my heart until I die. Yes. Rule me, O Elohim, keeping me back from wicked sin and from every wicked woman that causeth the simple to stumble. So here's Solomon. <laughs> Solomon talking about from every wicked woman that causeth the simple to stumble. Eh? What do you mean? Eh? Yes, yeah, and in Proverbs he said it. But he had hundreds of women. He had a thousand women in all. And he's asking the Most High to keep him from every... <laughs> yes. Continue. You look, at, look at this, because... Um, we, eh?
Read the next one because you don't have any mic. And let not the beauty of a lawless woman beguile me, Mm -hmm. nor anyone that is subject to unprofitable sin. But hear this. Go to 1 Kings 11 verse 1. 1 Kings 11 verse 1. This is Solomon here speaking. Nice and big and bold. Read it please. But King Solomon loved many strange women, (laughs) together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Of the nations? Of the nations concerning which Yahuwah said unto the children of Yasharel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. Mm. For surely they will turn away your heart after their mighty ones. Mm. Solomon clave unto these in love. Unto these in love. And how many did he have? Verse 3. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Verse 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with Yahuwah his Alua, as was the heart of David his father. Verse 5. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And six. And Solomon did evil in the sight of Yahuwah, and went not fully after Yahuwah, as did David his father. And then what did he do? Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, Mm -hmm. in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Continue. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Well, the human being is a very complicated um, creature. Huh? Yes. The sinful nature is dangerous. Because look at Solomon here. Look how eloquently he was writing in the Psalms of Solomon. Yeah. Still went. Y- yes. Oh, read, read seven again in the, the, the Psalms of Solomon, verse seven. Rule me, O Elohim, keeping me back from wicked sin and from every wicked woman that causeth the simple to stumble. This is how powerful sin is. This is how powerful sin is. Verse 8. And let not the beauty of a lawless woman beguile me, nor anyone that is subject to unprofitable sin. Mm -hmm. Establish the works of my hands before thee, and preserve my goings in the remembrance of thee. Protect my tongue and my lips with words of truth, anger and unreasoning, wrath put far from me, murmuring, and in patience, in affliction, remove far from me. When, if I sin, thou chastenest me, that I may return unto thee. All right. When, if I sin, thou chastenest me, that I may return unto thee. Without chastening people, we are going to be on our high horse. Sometimes the most has to take us off, let us fall off that horse, in order for us to go back to Humility, go down to the ground. Verse 12. Uh, which verse? Yes, 12. But with good will and cheerf- cheerfulness support my soul. When thou strengthenest my soul, what is given to me will be sufficient for me. For if thou givest not strength, who can endure chastisement with poverty? So even when we are being chastened, the most is the one that's going to give us strength to go through our Chastisement. Verse 14. When a man is rebuked by means of his corruption, thy testing of him is in his flesh and in the affliction of poverty. Mm. If the righteous endureth in all these trials, he he shall shall receive receive mercy mercy from from Yahuwah. Yahuwah. Endurance. That is what is important. Endurance. Can you endure the chastening? If you can endure it, then you will receive the mercy of the 
most high. Now, as I said earlier, we can spare Yahuwah's chastening by chastening ourselves. Chastening ourselves. Psalm 69, verse 10. Chastening ourselves, afflicting our own selves. This will help us along the path of righteousness, along the way, not only to escape from Yahuwah's chastening, but... Uh, Psalm 69, verse 10. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. That was to my reproach. So, weeping, fasting, afflicting our souls is to our reproach. You know we have done something wrong. We don't just sit inside of it. We go fasting, fasting, fasting to make sure that we are right with the Most High. Because this is why sometimes we, don't, we can't feel Yahuwah. Yahuwah feels as if he's not there. You feel abandoned, alone. Yes? Because we need to actually afflict ourselves to let the Most High see that you're really, really, really sorry for what you actually did. Daniel 10, 11 to 12, the importance of afflicting our own souls. Daniel 10, 11 to 12. And he said unto me. This is the angel speaking to Daniel. O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak yeah. unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and, and to, to chasten, chasten thyself before thy allure, thy Ooh. words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm doing that double cover. For those who are on the radio, those who are on the radio, I um, I don't even know how I can put up because I'm locked out of the website. Um, um, Ziona, if you're listening, try to see if you can get it on YouTube. Okay, I think it's on YouTube and it's much better on YouTube. It will go out and in, but it will stay. You are anyone who is listening on the radio and struggling on the radio. Uh, we will have to find a way to put up back this teaching. All right. So Daniel chastened himself before Alua. And what did the angel say? From the first day, you set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before Yahuwah. Thy words were heard. So the Most High will listen and will hear when we choose to afflict our own selves. Many of us as believers, we hardly fast. Hardly, hardly ever fast. We have to elect to fast. When, being told to fast and electing to fast, two different things. When we elect to fast, it's far, far greater benefit because you do it out of your heart. Leviticus 23, 26 to 32. And we know what that is. Leviticus 23. That is the... Feast, and we know which feast that is speaking about afflicting our own souls. Continue. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be in holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. So, so it's so important for us to afflict our own souls that the Most High made it one of the feasts. It's called the Day of Atonement. Okay? And, and, and in speaking about this feast, the Most High told us 
that anyone who does not afflict his soul will be cut off from the people. Read verse 29. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall cut off from among his people. He shall be cut off from among his people. That's how important it is for us to afflict our own souls. Now, when we are afflicting our own souls, our hearts must be in it when we chasten ourselves. So when we are there fasting, the Most High told us in Isaiah 58, if we are not right, he will not accept our offering. Isaiah 58, start at verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Mm. Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, mm -hmm. and exact all your labors. Mm -hmm. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. All right. So if we are not fasting in the right frame, right frame of mind, the Most High will not accept our fast. So when we are fasting, for example, to afflict our souls, we have to be repentant, truly, truly repentant. We have to be doing it because we are repentant. Now, finally, the secret to overcoming chastening repentance when we are being chastened try to figure out what it is we are being chastened for why am i going through this and the most has a way to let us know he will reveal it to us if we are seeking and sometimes the same way that we disobey is the same way that he chastens us. Um, let me just... All right. Yes. So repentance, the key to chastening. Luke 17, 3 to 4. Hold on, please. Let me get it. Luke 17, 3 to 4. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, Rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Mm -hmm. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. All right. So you see this. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. This is how the Most High works with us. While we are being chastened, if we repent, he will forgive us. Revelation 3, 19 to 20. Repentance, the importance of repentance. Revelation 3, 19 to 20. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Ha, 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 ha. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous and repent. Verse 20. So he's telling us in verse 20 now that he's waiting on us. He's just there patiently waiting on us. Read verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, 
I will come in to him, and he will sup with him, and he with me. That's the importance of repentance. He will be knocking. If we open, he will come in to sup with us. As many as he loves, he rebukes and chastens. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So when we are being chastened, the answer is repent. Job 42, 5 to 7. Job 42, 5 to 7. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. So Job here was repenting before the Most High. Verse 6. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. So this is Job repenting. He says, I abhor, I detest myself and repent in dust and ashes. Verse 7. And it was so. That after Yahuwah had spoken these words unto Job, Yahuwah said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. All right, so this is the case of Job. Job was repentant, and because of his repentance, he was held in higher esteem than his friends. And he himself had to be praying to the Most High, uh, making an offering to the Most High on behalf of his friends, I think. Acts 26, verse 20. Should be the final one. Acts 26, verse 20. Go ahead. But showed first unto them of Damascus, and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to Alua, and do works meet for repentance. So I, I put in this last one here for this last part. That they should repent and turn to Alua, and do works meet for repentance. So repentance is not only just saying that you are sorry. Whatever restitution you can make, you make restitution. So when you're repenting, you might, you might have to afflict yourself as to show that you truly are repentant. Afflict yourself fasting and prayer and um, supplication unto the Most High. That you might have to do to show Works meet for repentance. Because the world of believers, we are in a style of just repenting, 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 and we just say we are sorry, go, we pray, we are sorry, Father, we are sorry, we are sorry. The Most High wants more than that. He wants due diligence. He wants to show that we truly are truly, truly sorry. We are truly, truly repentant. All right? So that was our look at chastening. And the bottom line of chastening, if I was to do a summary on what we did, let me see if we can do a summary. Um, Yahuwah treats us like sons. And when we are chastened, we have no choice but to endure. If we do not endure, we would have failed. We would have failed. And... There is no salvation without chastening. Chastening is an essential part of our salvation because it turns us around away from pride, away from sin, away from willful sin, away from being blinded in sin. And being um, chastised by the Most High is a blessing. And His chastening might even bring us near to death. But if we endure, we will be restored better than before. The Most High delivers those whom He chastens, those who endure it. And we can be saved through chastening. 
We can ch- spare the most eyes chastening by chastening ourselves. But our hearts must be right when we are afflicting our own souls. <coughs> and the secret to overcome chastening is sincere repentance with fruit that is meat for repentance. Okay? So that is what we presented today. Very important, this chastening, because this is something that we are not taught regularly or many people do not even know the importance of chastening. Chastening keeps us away from sin, takes us out of iniquity, lets us overcome evil and brings us in the path of righteousness so we will not err. Anyone with anything to say before we go? Yeah, one thing with chastening yeah. is we see in children the nature of chastening with them yeah. and how young children can easily take correction, even if it hurts them and they cry and run off in pain or sad with whatever's happening. You see, shortly after, they're able to continue as if nothing happened. Mm. And with us as believers, we need to have the same type of heart because it says in the Gospels that if, we don't ha- if we're not like little children then we won't enter the kingdom. So if we're prideful or we think we're this great person whom, who can't be embarrassed or shamed, then the Most High is going to have to work on that. And we're going to have to face chastening for those sins. And we need true repentance in order to overcome it. So by humbling ourselves, by afflicting a fast, or spending time seeking the Most High in His presence, that will bring us closer to righteousness mm. and away from sin. Yes. Anyone else? George? Oh. Bangani? Huh? All right. I'm okay. All right. So, thank you all for listening, if you are listening. And, um, yeah. Thank you all for listening, for those who are listening. And thank you all for watching, those who were watching. This is Kazak from Jaw Radio. And um, you can check check us out at jawradio.org. We apologize for those who are live for the many different technical difficulties. We are having internet problems here. The internet keeps bugging out. I don't know why, but ah, that's how it is. And um, we'll see if we can remedy it, if it is possible. But until next time, shalom. Shalom. Shalom.